The periodic trends of the periodic table are very important to know because they can help you predict the properties of an element and they can help you understand why atoms react the way they do. The most important periodic trends are electronegativity, ionization energy, electron affinity, atomic radius, and metallic character. So let's talk about electronegativity. Electronegativity describes an atom's ability to attract and bind with electrons. So you can remember the phrase electron attractability. Even though it's not a real word, it can help you remember what electronegativity is referring to. So the more attracted the electron is to an element, the higher its electronegativity value will be. The atomic number and the distance of the valence electrons from the nucleus can both affect the electronegativity of an atom. Most atoms also like to follow the octet rule and have the most stable electron configuration and will fill their electron shells accordingly. Looking at the periodic table, elements located on the left side have electron shells that are less than half full. Because of this, elements would need a lot of energy to gain electrons as opposed to just losing them. The least electronegative atoms are either francium or cesium, depending on which electronegativity scale you use, because it's hard for these elements to get more electrons. Notice their location on the bottom left of the periodic table. So francium has an atomic number of 87, and it has seven electron shells. The first shell is filled with two electrons, the second shell is filled with 8 electrons, the third shell has 18 electrons, and the rest of the shells are filled accordingly up until the seventh shell. Notice in the last electron shell, however, that there's only one electron. You're going to need a lot of energy to fill up more electrons in this outermost shell, so francium would rather give up that electron. Cesium, which has an atomic number of 55, has a similar situation with its outermost shell. It would rather get rid of its outermost electron than satisfy the octet rule. So you can see that francium and cesium are not attracted to electrons. On the other side of the periodic table, however, elements have a tendency to gain electrons so that they can fill their outer electron shells and become more stable. The most electronegative atom is fluorine. So you can see how fluorine is on the right side of the periodic table. Exceptions to the rule include the lanthanoids and actinoids, which don't really follow any trends, the noble gases, which have complete valence electron shells and are perfectly stable, and the transition metals, because even though they do have electronegativity values, there is little change in their values because of their metallic properties that can also affect their attraction to electrons. So the general trend is, the electronegativity increases as you go from left to right across a period and from the bottom to the top of a group. The higher the electronegativity number is, the higher the ability to attract electrons. One way scientists measure electronegativity is by using the Pauling scale. Values go from 0.7 Pauling units, which is a low value and has a low attraction to electrons, to 3.98 Pauling units, which is a high electronegativity value and has a high attraction for electrons. The next periodic trend is ionization energy, or the energy needed for a neutral atom to remove an electron or become a positive ion. You can remember it by remembering the phrase electron removization energy, because you're literally removing an electron. The lower the ionization energy is, the more likely it is for the element to turn into a cation or have a positive charge. The higher the ionization energy is, the harder it is for the element to remove an electron. That's why you'll catch helium having the highest ionization energy because it's the hardest to remove an electron, while francium has the lowest ionization energy. Notice their positions on the periodic table. Helium on the top right, while francium is on the bottom left. One thing that affects ionization energy, as well as other periodic trends, is what's called electron shielding, 
or the ability of the innermost electrons closest to the nucleus to shield it from the valence electrons or the electrons furthest away from the nucleus. So the innermost electrons are attracted by the positive nucleus and the outermost electrons are repelled. So these inner electrons shield the outer electrons from the attraction of the nucleus. So when you look at the trend of ionization energy, it's pretty much the same as electronegativity. Going from left to right increases ionization energy, as well as going from the bottom to the top of a group. The next periodic trend is electron affinity, or the ability to become a negative ion. You can remember it by remembering electron acceptability or gainability. So the general trend is, as you go from left to right along the periodic table, the electron affinity increases, as well as when you go from the bottom to the top of a group. The more negative the electron affinity number is for an atom, the higher the attraction it's going to have for electrons. So even though this is the general trend for electron affinity, there are exceptions to this rule. Fluorine, for example, should have the highest electron affinity, but it's actually chlorine that does. So if we compare the two elements, chlorine's electron affinity is negative 349 kilojoules per mole. The negative sign means that energy is being released, while fluorine's electron affinity is negative 328 kilojoules per mole. Chlorine has 17 electrons, while fluorine has 9. And lastly, let's compare their electron configurations. Notice how chlorine has an extra p orbital. This means that chlorine has more space to fit more electrons than fluorine does. Chlorine is also a bigger atom than fluorine. So what's the difference then between ionization energy and electron affinity? Even though ionization energy and electron affinity are both measured with kilojoules per mole or electron volts, the ionization energy deals with a neutral atom losing an electron and becoming a positive ion, while electron affinity deals with a neutral atom gaining an electron and becoming a negative ion. So then, what's the difference between electronegativity and electron affinity? Well, electronegativity is more of a property and is not something you can actually measure. It's explained through bonding and polarity. While electron affinity can actually be measured by finding out how much energy is released when an electron is added to an atom. Another important periodic trend is atomic radius. We know that the radius is half the diameter of a circle. Well, the radius is half the diameter of a circle, but the atomic radius, on the other hand, measures the size of an atom. So the atomic radius typically measures the distance from the center of the nucleus to the edge of the electron cloud. The problem is, this is a hard measurement to make because electrons are always moving and don't have an exact location. So scientists use different ways of measuring the radius of an atom, such as the metallic radius, the van der Waals radius, the covalent radius, and the ionic radius. The atomic radius increases as you go from the top to the bottom of a group because the number of valence electrons increase. These electrons occupy higher levels because of their quantum numbers, and this causes the valence electrons to be further away from the nucleus, resulting in a bigger radius. Electron shielding prevents the outer electrons from being attracted to the nucleus and results in a larger atomic radius because the electrons are held more loosely. The atomic radius decreases as you go from left to right across a period. Even though the number of electrons increases, so does the number of protons, and one proton has a stronger effect than one electron. So the electrons are going to be held more tightly resulting in a smaller radius. So the general trend for the atomic radius is that when you go from right to left of the periodic table, 
the radius increases as well as when you go from the top to the bottom of a group. Francium has the highest atomic radius, while helium has the lowest. You can remember that by remembering the phrase, franchisers are bigger than the helpless. Franchisers to remember francium, and helpless to remember helium. Finally, the last periodic trend is metallic character, or the ability of an atom to lose an electron. Metallic character includes the ability of metals to lose electrons to form positive ions or become electron donors. They typically form oxides that are basic, like calcium oxide or barium oxide, and the lost electrons react with acids to make hydrogen gas. Metallic character decreases from left to right across a period. This is because the atomic radius decreases and the outer electrons of smaller atoms don't ionize as easily. Metallic characteristics increase going down a group. Electron shielding causes the atomic radius to increase and the outer electrons ionize more easily than electrons in smaller atoms. Smaller atoms have outer electrons that do not easily ionize because the electrons are closer to the nucleus while bigger atoms have outer electrons that easily become ions and are further away from the nucleus. So the general trend for metallic character is, as you go from right to left of the periodic table, the metallic character increases, as well as when you go down a group. So how can you memorize all of these trends? Well, you can remember that electronegativity, ionization energy, and electron affinity all increase from left to right and from the bottom to the top of the periodic table by remembering negative iono affinity up to the right. And you can remember that atomic radius and metallic character typically increase from right to left and from the top to the bottom of the periodic table by remembering radiometallic down to the left. And those are all the periodic trends. Well, I hope this can help you remember what all the trends are. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.